Welcome back everybody, it's D with these tackle box and I got a couple of lures that I wanted to run by y'all today. Today's video is going to cover uh, slight differences in the same brands, but which ones were older and which ones are newer. And a lot of times when we get into older and newer, we're looking at specifics like, oh, this one was made of wood, this one's made of plastic. But it's not the same for every brand of lures. For example, uh, Bagley's out of, out of Florida. Uh, they have their balsa uh, crankbaits and some of the topwaters too, but their crankbaits have always been uh, uh, made out of wood. So I have a bunch of those that uh, I thought were old when I first got them. But then I realized that they were the newer models or made in the Dominican Republic as opposed to the ones that were originally made here in Florida. So I wanted to cover a couple of those differences. There's the same thing goes for a couple of other brands that look similar, but are totally different. Um, there's a couple of other ones like the Man's uh, Baby One uh, Minuses. Uh, a lot of times you hear people talking about, hey, um, I'm looking for these, but the double stamped ones. And so when I first started hearing that term about um, double stamped Man's lures, I thought, you know, what's the difference? I mean, they look the same to me. But I got to looking at values and I realized that a lot of people pay more for the older ones with the double stamp because, I don't know, are they the original or do they sound different, fish different? I'm not sure. But there's little things like that that change the whole, um, the way that you see these lures when you start getting multiple bunches of groups of lures and you have to itemize them and you can actually go through them, notice these differences and know which ones are older and when, which ones are more common and a little bit, you know, more of a common value as opposed to the ones that are uh, you know bought for a good amount of money so let me um and you know we don't focus so much on the money part of this whole thing but the money part is important for when you're either evaluating your collection selling your pieces uh or buying them i mean to add to your collection you do not want to be overpaying right but at the same time if you're looking for the ogs the the, the lures that started it or started the whole hunt for that lure, then let me show you a couple of them and let's get right into it. For example, one of my favorite brands is the Cordell, Cordell Big O. Now these suckers right here, um, they look very similar as they went throughout the years. Um, the first one started off made out of wood and um, th they were hand carved and it was just a whole other ball game. That's a whole other episode. But when it came to the plastic ones, I think these were what mid 70s these two look so much similar i mean you would literally just think that's the same lure right the same body style and everything but if you notice on the the way that the head and the lip you see how this one has a little bit of rounder and this one's a little bit more flush you can see the difference in that tapered area around the head but not just that in order to be able to distinguish which ones is the older ones and which ones are the newer ones take a look at that dot right there this is going to be your telltale sign right there that dot right here at the back tail defines this as the older version and this one here with the dot at the uh, behind the gills it's the newer version so when you're looking at collecting these or fishing these they each have their differences this one's a wand knocker and even though it's an older one knocker it's newer than this silent one here with the spot on the tail. So take a look at that one real close. See the profile under the lip and then the spot on the tail. This one has the profile under the lip a little bit more rounded. See? And it also has the dot up here on the back of the gills. So you'll be able to tell the difference between the Cordell Big O older and newer when we're talking about plastics then we'll go to uh, Florida from Arkansas to Florida these are your older Bagley lures and I'm not sure which one this one is the model wise but if you can look closely here you'll see that it has like a brass colored wire that goes through brass at the belly brass at the tail see It's all brass wire that goes through the whole lure. These are made out of wood though. This is a balsa lure, I believe. 
Then they had this one here, which was a, um, well, I think this is what they call a transition, transitioning period, where it had the brass hanger on the tail, the brass on the belly, but on the lip, you can see right there, it's like a stainless steel little uh, hook eye thing there. And so there, that piece right there will tell you that this is newer than the older one. The older one has all brass. This one has all, uh, it has two brass and one of the stainless uh, line ties. But then you get to this one here and you can see that this one has stainless, stainless on the belly and stainless on the lip. So this one would be your more, more uh, modern one, your newer one. This one here would, would be your transitioning period time. So this is the stainless brass brass. And then this one here would be your all brass. So this one would be one of the older original ones. So there you go. Now with Bagley's, I don't know a lot about the models and stuff like that. There's tons of them. I've been looking through them and some of them are hard to tell apart uh, as far as the sizes and the lips and all that stuff. So I'm still working on bettering myself on those. but. There's some other ones that we do know a little bit better, and that would be like these storms. This one here is your older storm. This is a, a larger chug bug, but you see how it's stamped on there, rattling chug bug? This is your older version. These, my friends, are just your newer version, and they look pretty cool. And almost similar body and everything, but these usually don't have the stamp on there, especially on the natural pattern like that, but the stamp, it's nowhere to be found. They both sound the same. This one has a little bit of a higher tone, but this is your older version of the both of them. This is your newer version of the both of them. So when you're looking for details, you're gonna see the detail is in the belly stamp. Then we're gonna move on to, okay, we covered the Bagley's, we covered the Cordell's, <coughs> Arkansas, Arkansas, then we're gonna go to one of the ones that I love, which is your river runs. This is gonna be your hidden river run. It's the midget river run. And as you can see, the white eye with the surface hardware and the stamp dictate this one, as well as the, the cup at the back tail to be the more modern version. And I'm gonna show you what I mean. This is your more modern version. This one here has the same surface hardware, no cup on the tail, gold eyes, and this is your uh, next oldest, next to the oldest. And this one here with the gold eyes as well, but with the two piece hardware will be your oldest. So take a quick peek at this uh, hardware setup here, it's pretty interesting. It has a flat piece that goes over the bar and on the back tail it's also a two piece. So this is what they call a two piece hardware on a midget river run. Gold eyes, these are your older 1940s and 50s. This one here is also the older one because of the gold eye, but it has a surface hardware so you're looking at 60s and early 70s. This one would, here would be your, what, 1970s to 75, somewhere around there, 80. I don't think they made them in the 80s because by the 80s, a lot of these were phased out. But surface hardware, the cream colored eyes are the more modern. Gold colored eyes, surface hardware, no cup on the tail are your older. And your oldest one here is, would be the two-piece hardware. So when you find these river runs with these type of hardware, that tells you right there that it's an older one. The gold eye is usually going to be on the two-piece hardware like that. Got it? Now, while we're speaking about uh, Hedden, um, some of you guys asked me if I have any uh, Hedden vamps, just because I guess they look kind of like the Hedden river runs, right? So I wanted to show you all a couple of them here, and we have... This one here would be your latest, probably 1990s to 2000. This is your Hedden uh, Vamp Spook. Let me 
there you go. I think you can see the stencil there. And take a quick notice at these three dots here. I'm going to explain to you why it's got those three dots there. And a lot of you are probably thinking, well, where's the lip? You know, the lip like, like the way these guys, the river runs have the lip attached like that, right? Well, the vamps, the plastic vamp spooks that usually have that, have the lip on those three uh, dots right there with the screws. But these here, this version, as well as this one here, this is a GR code for a green crawdad. This one is your PS for purple scale. And so these two right here from the same time period, 1990s to 2000, and they both have the same three empty holes there. These were made uh, by Hedden for a special run of vamps that would walk the dog type of uh, action, like the Zara Spooks. So I've, I, I've got that question a couple of times. Every time that people find something like this without the lip on it, they think it's been altered or they're wondering if it's a specific series or what. Well, this is your uh, Zara Spook action type, dog walking type uh, vamp series. That's why they had no, pre, no uh, cups attached to those holes there. Now I'm assuming you can put a cup on there and make it a diver. But this is supposed to be a floating vamp spook that you can uh, use as a topwater lure. Now, let me show you something really interesting because you look at this one here, right? It's a beautiful lure. Got the three holes there empty like that. You can swim it like I told you. But this one is your original hidden vamp. I believe this one also says spook on it. Yeah, vamp spook. And this one here doesn't have any of those holes like that and that is because this one is a saltwater vamp and so it's also a um, I believe it suspends or floats and uh, slightly sinks but it's a original old school hidden vamp spook you see the gold eyes and under the chin it's missing those holes this one was originally made this way so it's not a, a mistake or a version of this it's the earlier version of the newer plastic ones with the three holes under the chin these are tough to find uh, you can find a lot of them with the three holes like that the newer ones in the 2000s i think these were from 1960s 50s 60s and these were purposely made this way see uh, see spook and so there you go now you've done uh, figured that one out and I've had multiple messages about that three holes on the chin like that and everybody's always thinking that the cups are removed and sold as a uh, floater well now you know they were actually made that way and one other one that I wanted to talk to you about this one is for sure uh, <clears throat> has a big following kind of like the wiggle warts and I was gonna bring some wiggle warts on here but everybody talks about the wiggle warts. Some people like them, some people don't. Some people consider them to be iconic lures because they had that erratic uh, swim pattern. Other people hate that. But this one here, when we talk about the man's uh, baby one minuses, I always have someone ask me, oh, but are they double stamped? And you know, like I said in the beginning, at first I would think, what in the world are they talking about double stamped? Well, you see that right there where it says baby one minus a double stamped lure has the uh, baby one minus embossed on one side and then it would have the uh, let me see if I can get this sucker word right here you can see kind of see where it shows the word man's right there and it's also uh, come on let me see it shows it a little bit it's the same color as a pattern but um, it shows man's and then over here baby one minuses in raised letters so you're gonna be able to easily tell from now on if it has the raised lettering that says man's and then baby one minus on this side that is the one that a lot of guys are looking for and these are a little bit more costly than this guy here this guy also says man's right there see but on the other side, it is plain flush with the paint. 
there's nothing on there. This is your one stamp. This is your double stamp. And they're both exactly the same lures, and I believe they still even make some of these double stamps. I'm not sure. I think I heard somebody say that. Uh, but this one stamp you can find quite often. This would be your oldest one, the double stamp. This one would be the next one down. And of course, we have a modernized version of it with a little bit of a crosshatch pattern. And this one I don't think has anything embossed on there that says um, man's or nothing like that. So the only thing that I could see is here on the belly, it shows a man's baby one minus. So this is a whole other layout for this one. And the eyes especially are like beaded stick on type of eyes. While these here were uh, stickers that were put in that concave area of the eyeball. So you can see concave type of eyeball, sticker flush with the body, double stamped, stamp on one side, stamp on the other. And then that's your oldest one. The next one down would be the one stamp right there. No stamp on the other side, same pressed eyeball, sticker on there. And the more modern version is the one that has the, the stick on eye with the lettering at the bottom there and the, you know, the pattern that looks like scales on it. So that covers the mans. And then just to give you all a little bonus of something, we have this one here. I forgot what this one's called, but it's a uh, Rebel and it's a weedless. Mm, I don't know. I forgot what this one's called, man. The, the actual um, model of this one here. I know it's something frog or weedless frog. I don't know what it's called, but it's a Rebel. And so this guy right here, as you can see, would go through the grasses or the lilies and the thick stuff and it should be without a problem because it would usually um, keep this from getting caught up and I've used this one before and man it does great but one that I saw that some people confuse would be this guy here this is your Norman weed walker and um, I know some of y'all are gonna notice this and see the the actual layout here with the weedless hook see right there that uh, spring that's right there that keeps the hook from getting caught up in the weeds and not only that gives you a good opportunity to be able to fish this in the thick stuff this is your Norman weed walker now a lot of times and I think it even says it right here yeah weed walker by Norman and so a lot of times I, I see where people confuse that with, well this one's broken now I was trying to straighten it out but I ended up breaking it but this is your hidden moss boss and this one has no it doesn't have the prong there to hold the weedless stuff but it swims so cool when you when you fish this guy in the water it, it tends to do some type of diving action and popping up diving and popping up I usually throw it I let it sink in through the brush and then when I jerk the lure a little bit it'll straighten up and then I'll let it drop again. That's the same for this one here. And when you rip them over the heavy cover, this one has a little turbulence there that it creates with that with that little winding piece there, a flat brass piece there. And this one has more of a silent kind of movement, kind of steady drop, pull, steady drop, pull. This one you can even run it across everything, you know. So that's your Norman Weed Walker. This is your head and moss boss broken head and moss moss. We're gonna have to replace this lure. This is not gonna work anymore. But these two right here guys, they look close in appearance, but they're two different lures. Head and Norman. Pretty cool lures. Either way I have both of them in my box and I use them so guys that's what I got for y'all today. Just wanted to touch a little uh on some details that differentiate each lure and then that way you can learn to tell the difference between those piles of lures that you see at yard sales, flea markets, or estate sales, or whatever. And that way you know which ones are the older, which ones are the newer, and you can shop accordingly, or collect accordingly, or buy or sell or trade, whatever it is that you do. We don't care. Anyways, this is D signing off. Till next time, fish out. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but our channel got monetized. 
you guys can uh, take a look at our options down here and hey throw us a, a bone man I mean and we always do this stuff for all of you guys to enjoy the information mainly the historical facts but it doesn't hurt to us if you guys feel like signing up just look at the links at the bottom here and uh, check out our bio there and y'all will be able to uh, help out if you all feel like it and if not we'll continue to keep cranking them out so till next time this is D signing off fish out